Hi everyone, my name is Frank. Welcome to this session about crunching the cookies data set. It's a data engineering that goes beyond orchestration and pipelines. I want to focus on marketplace and Databricks asset bundles. We look at this application and um, it's actually the Bakehouse application that is based on the famous cookie data set from the AI Summit keynote. And this data set or the application is using that data set and deriving the top five locations to build a new flagship store. And you see there is like local ingredients, there's the cities which are selling the most, and then we get a DBRX generated description of this potential new flagship store. That's the goal of the applications. So all, all you see here is a AI BI dashboard that is showing the real sales data that is uh, streaming fresh live sales data uh, in, in two different uh, diagrams. Now, if we look at how this is done, the outer loop, the core orchestration is obviously Databricks workflows. It's a couple of steps. It starts with this ingest pipeline. And then there is also this node with this if then switch. And then we uh, have the query DBRX. It's an AI query that is called in a workflow SQL task. And then there's two more notebooks, one to update a potential downstream system. And then one, if you go to the false branch, it's email exit without AI, that's another notebook. Now, if we look into the ingestion pipeline, it's a DLT pipeline that is written entirely in SQL. And this DLT pipeline is not using one ingestion source, but three different ingestion sources. So the raw suppliers is an XML file, which is containing, well, the suppliers, obviously, but also the key ingredient of that suppliers. Then we have raw sales data coming from SQL Server. And the third one is raw franchises, which is coming from Salesforce. And the Salesforce and the SQL Server data is ingested via Lakeflow Connect. Then the Salesforce data and the sales data is joined with a SQL join into this flagship location store. So from the best uh, franchises with the most sales, we derive the flagship store locations. And then the key cookie ingredients are taken from this raw suppliers table. If I click into the SQL task of the workflow, we get to the AI query function, which is the SQL function that is concatenating the prompt for the LLM. So it's using the concat function uh, defining the prompt, like give me those three sentences that I want to see using the district, the city, and the country, which are using this ingredient. And it's all defined within the function. Uh, it's using those parameters. And then the function is applied to a column, and the column is the description column. So we update in that table the description column by calling that function with the parameters and those parameters there are columns in this table as well having said all that the only remaining question is how do you get the data and how do you get the code so let's talk about marketplace and databricks asset bundles i'm using marketplace from within my workspace and all i do is just search for the cookie data set and you know you you can all do this right now uh, don't do it right now listen to me first but you can do it anytime at home. And then all you need to do is you click on get instance access. It tells you it comes with two schemas. And I uh, want to click here on more options. Where do you plan to use the product? I want to use it on Databricks. And then actually that's very important because otherwise you have to change the names. I need to confirm that I read that and then I click on get instance access and this is all real time and you know what it already happened. So if I go to catalog now, you can see there is this Bakehouse catalog and the Bakehouse catalog, it comes with the media um, schema that uh, the AI people are using for customer reviews and you know classifying those reviews and running sentiment analysis on top of that and the sales schema that we want to use with the customer franchises suppliers and transaction tables and it also comes with this supplier xml um, volume 
that we were using to ingest uh, uh, supplier data into the supplier table. So this is all like pre-set up for you. You don't need to use Lakeflow connectors to, you know, for SQL Server and for Salesforce. All this was done previously. And then I took a snapshot as an easy starting point for you to play with this Bakehouse application. And that's the part from Marketplace. Okay, so to make those dApps work for yourself, to deploy this Databricks asset bundle for the Bakehouse application, just go to the tech marketing repo. We're going to share the GitHub URL later. What you do is you select the cookies data eng dApp um, folder, and there you have to read me for the, for the main steps. This is not a getting started tutorial. This is just, you know, to show you how this is working. And what you need to do is you need to have the command line installed. You need to get the cookies data set and all this um, I've done already. And um, you have to have this other big house active um, catalog and then you authenticate and then basically you can just, you know, deploy that bundle. Now this bundle, once you check out the repo is available, for example, you can open it with your VS code. That's what I've done here. And um, I told you the bundle uses YAML files or YAML file or core YAML file, which is this databricks.yaml um, to describe the project and all the components in the project. And if you look at this, it kind of includes a resources um, directory with uh, other YAML files. So any YAML file in that resources directory, which is actually this one, is also in included. And then we define targets for development and there is another target for production and that's the workspace i'm using to deploy for production that's the workspace i'm showing you um, all the time and um, yeah this is it let's uh, look at the other two yaml files that's the one for the data pipelines and that's the one for workflows and that one is actually pretty short because it references the code which is um, stored here in the SQL file. That's the DLT pipeline code written in SQL, the one that we just looked at. And that one is a little bit longer because it contains all the steps for the orchestration. Now, if you're like me, you probably think like, wow, um, this is a lot to write. And like, basically this is like, if you wrote that manually, this is redoing all the simple, all the all the same steps that you already did in the UI, and that's like not something very refreshing, and it's not something I'm I'm drawing uh, satisfaction from. So I recommend not to 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 start from scratch and write this. So there's one way to do it, and I actually um, described this in the repo as well, and that's also what I did. And um, so what I did is I used bundle generate, and you can use the bundle generate command and give it a pipeline or a job argument and then the id of an existing pipeline or of an existing job and um, guess what it generates exactly those two files like the etl and the orchestration file so this is relatively easy and then you can still go and say look i want to parameterize this i want to add a variable and that's actually what i did for the data warehouse id and I did this because in this um, DAB, I'm not creating the data warehouse. I'm just referencing the data warehouse. And this is why I need to pass the ID. It has a default value. So in my command lines, you typically see me passing this value just to be on the, uh, on the, on the right side, you know, to make sure it's working. But you could also omit this if you set it here correctly. Now, the next question is, um, yeah. How do you run that? And the answer is there's actually two ways of doing that. Um, so one is you just uh, open a terminal. Let me try that. Yeah, this is my terminal. Let's just clear this to have a little bit more space. And then you run in the terminal. It could be an external, external. It could be like within VS Code. You run your deploy command and the deploy command is that one. So I say bundle deploy, I give it the environment with minus T prod. And then I specify my warehouse ID because I want to tell the bundle which warehouse to use to run the AI query. And um, this is for the profile. This is to get the right authentication. And um, let's try. 
this should deploy the bundle. And the bundle is getting uploaded to the workspace. It's deploying the resources, which is good. It's updating the state and hooray, that's it. So it took us literally two seconds, like runtime or clock time to deploy the whole application. Uh, once you have the bundle, you can deploy within seconds. And that's what people do in their CI CD pipelines. If they have like uh, like a Git action, if you commit something, it automatically kicks off this DAB deploy process. And guess what? There is also a destroy. I'm not doing it now, but just to show you, I could also say bundle destroy. That kind of destroys, removes the whole bundle. There is actually one command that I should tell you, and it's the, the validate one. So if I go and validate, it validates the correctness of the bundle. Let's see if this is true. Well, it should be correct because I just deployed it. The other way of working with Databricks asset bundles, which is uh, even more tightly integrated with uh, VS Code and kind of reduces the time you spend in the inner loop of, of development, is using the Databricks VS Code extension. We just published a blog posting about that. I recommend you go and read that and you check out the documentation. And then once you installed the, the DAP extension or the Databricks um, Visual Code extension, you can click on it and you see the configuration part. You see I'm deploying to prod and my prod instance is under this host name. I still do actually development deployment for some reasons and um, I am having a bundle with the workflows component and you see this workflows component has these tasks and I have a pipeline with these using that catalog and that target setting. And it even gives you the bundle variables that I defined. So what I could do, I could go here and say, well, force a uh, deploy bundle or destroy the bundle or refresh the remote site. And well, this gives me a, a better graphical view of what's going on. So you can choose um, whatever you want. So I started with the terminal in VS Code, and now I'm switching more and more to using this Databricks extension. So if I go to my workspace that used to be empty, and I showed you that just to prove that I don't have any cards up my sleeve, and I click on workflows, wow, we see the workflow that was just deployed. And if I click on Delta Life tables, we also see the Delta Life table. And if I dig into that, uh, workflow, you see these are all the tasks and that's the pipeline task and that's the SQL query task and it's referencing that file. And so what I do now is, well, I click on run, that's it. So I run the whole um, orchestration, which is then triggering, first of all, the ingestion pipeline and then doing this if then else and then doing the AI query, et cetera, et cetera. So now we are in this position almost at the position um, from the beginning of this webinar where I showed you the, the full application. It takes a minute until the tables are generated from the pipeline. That actually means the pipeline was running already and it did generate um, the tables. And now we can look at like, what's the recommendation for the flagship store in Mission District in San Francisco? And well, locals and tourists uh, like it both. That sounds good. So the dashboard is working, which tells me the workflow was running. And if I click on the workflow, you see it ran and it, su it succeeded completely. Um, that's the, the branch I was not executing. And if I click on that run again, you see it was perfectly doing whatever we expected it to do. So. This is a success, it's, it's as good as it could be. You know, we have the dashboard, we deployed the whole application, a single command. All we did is reference the data warehouse, which I could have omitted because it's a default parameter in the DAB. Now, as I told you, this is on GitHub, so you can easily download it, clone it, reproduce the example. It's a unique combination of, you know, using Marketplace for a test data set that you can use forever what you want to do, and you can use the DAB to easily deploy this, not complex, but rather complex um, application doing everything from you know ETL to orchestration to AI query to dashboards. And that kind of brings me 
to the end of this session. Thank you for joining. And if you have any technical questions, please post them at community.databricks.com. See you next time.